Alright, back before we go. Yes! Got him! Let's go, baby. That's the last core we need. Back to the control room, buddy. Alright, since there was no proper intro, thank you. What's up, guys? Crazy HD here. Today I'm bringing you guys episode 3 of Recore. <laughs> I was pissed off. I, I literally ended the episode and then hit, re hit record again right away, so. back up it looks like Remind me how these transfer plates work again? Okay. Select a transfer plate on the map to travel to its location. Find more plates to travel to more places. Got it. I don't even know if that's any language. Or supposed to sound like any language. Probably not, right. This is probably just gonna be catching up on stuff now. Uh, catching up on logs and stuff. Now that we beat the boss, cause it's 9.36. 
I have school tomorrow, so I gotta go to bed at like I I don't have a bedtime, but I choose to go to bed at like, like ten o'clock, ten thirty. So this is gonna be a short episode, probably a boring one, but I'll try to make it as entertaining as possible. from an old emergency beacon on the other side of that gate. The storm must have been blocking its signal. Come on, Mac. We better go check it out. The sands have shifted, revealing new adventures. You are now free to explore off the main story path. Seek out hidden dungeons where the fiercest enemies guard the, the best loot. Collect br blueprints, crafting materials, cores, and experience points by defeating wandering Corbots. Upgrade your Corbot companions at the workbench inside Jules Crawl. This sector is filled with rogue Corbots, Mac. Before we go much further, we should head back to our crawler so I can craft you some better parts. Yep, I agree. We're gonna go into the crawler, we're gonna read some logs, we're gonna see if we have anything to research, we'll do such and such. We're gonna do some inventorying stuff. are wondering like why I don't really talk much during combat and stuff I like if I want you to hear any dialogue there is and I'm also focusing I'm trying not to die because I feel like if I die a lot that would really piss you guys off because it would right, make it really okay, well, it not up, piss Matt. you guys off but it would make it boring so all right so let's see if we have anything at the workbench first and foremost we got some new stuff for the canine. Ooh, red bear, red bones. Bingo. All right, so canine in the house. This looks so stupid. <laughs> Wonder why it's glitching like that. Oh. All right. So we're gonna select Mac. Did I feel involved in? Core fusion. Make your friendly cores more powerful by fusing them with the cores you have extracted from enemy core bots as well as many core shards shards you have collected. The energy from used for core fusion in three types. Red fusion will upgrade your core's attack, increasing the damage any they deal in combat. Yellow fusion will increase your core's defense, raising your, their base health. Blue fusion will improve your core's energy, boosting the recharge rate of their lethal attacks. Each time you, your core bots level up, 
they can be infused with more fusion energy so they can make so make sure you upgrade your core bots with enemy cores and core shards as often as possible note the attack defense and energy numbers on your core bots description cards add the stats of their cores and the stats of their currently equipped frame parts and into a total stat number Say it just in case there's anything else that I need to use. The materials and jewels in Matora are transferred to the stash every time she returns to the crawler. Materials can be combined here to create high quality versions or broken apart to create lower quality versions. I'm just combining everything. I'm not gonna grind anything. Cause you know, you figure I could, oh, you figure I could always grind it down once I combine it. It sounds like I might, my fire company might have a fire call. I'm still not back yet for those of you wondering. which I highly doubt any of you are, but just saying. Looking good, boy. Now let's get back to that distress signal. All right, let's just gonna read these logs. What's new in my inventory? Oh, I gotta sneeze. Popper with the integrated energy projectors, PPRs can accomplish classification of sand to, and create stable foundations for far aging facilities and areas without accessible bedrock. Destroy poppers while they are hovering in the air. Bringer, the R1NGR is a recharge station for the thrust power cells on far aging personnel's and exo frames. Pass through the ringer's energy field to instantly refresh your jump and dash abilities. Hover switch and HB switch is an excellent option for controlling hard to reach terminals and other devices. It can be triggered by energy pulses across a broad range of frequencies. Shoot the switch with the correct color of energy rifle ammunition to activate or deactivate. Rogue Corbots Shepherd. This blue canine was designed to track down lost or malfunctioning corbites and herd them to a safe location. Lethal ability is dash. Dash is an offensive lethal ability where the canine quickly bursts towards a target and smashes through it. The dashing corbot has a radius around it that gives it a larger footprint, making it harder to avoid. Dash has a small amount of homing, but it can be encountered by dashing out of the way. The Red Canine is a fast moving fire suppression unit capable of starting fires of oxygen with its own explosive breath. Lethal ability is a flame bark. Flame bark is an offensive lethal ability where the canine unit em emits a series of ground based flame arcs towards its current target. Any target caught in the burst is damaged and will take damage over time from the burn effect. The preferred method of avoidance is jumping over flame arcs. Sapper, the yellow SPDR is a demolition unit. Sorry, demolition unit able to launch precision parabolic charges and then quickly exit the target area to avoid the resulting blast. Lethal ability is barrage or barrage, however you say it. I think it's barrage. 
Barrage is an offensive lethal ability where the SPDR launches several homing shots. Jesus. It hits, deal damage, and apply the destabilized effect. And this is creative field that can slow and destabilize. While bar Barrage can be avoided by dash, its projectile can also be targeted and shot out of the air. So we got Skull Cracker, Enforces Victors, Will in the Caverns, Beneath the Lonely Basin, and on all who dwell therein. Whoops, hit the wrong button. Ugh, we got a lot of new notes, it looks like five, I think. The MK3 Energy Rifle can be equipped with an Affinity Upgrade, allowing it to change its projectile to any of the three primary core colors, red, yellow, or blue. Oh. The, the, use a direction on the D-pad to change ri rifle affinities. Color matching the color of your projectiles to the color of the road of a rogue core bot's core will cause increased damage. In addition, the hover switch core bite and other devices can only be activated by matching their color affinity. Health booster to keep human crew members in optimal physical condition during their shifts. The Mandate Medical Service Division has authorized the use of Z65T health boosters. These infusions have a lasting effect and will permanently increase the user's wellness potential. Fast travel, originally transfer plates technology was only approved for the transport of non-organic obj objects such as core bots, but after extensive testing, the Mandate is now convinced this fast travel system is safe for human use. To initiate the fast travel, locate and activate a transfer plate and then select your desired destination from the map. Transfer plates are located throughout Far Eden and fast travel is authorized between any two locations regardless of the distance between them. The core design V1 OLT is assigned to Frame Salvage Yard 16 Violet demonstrates leadership potential, although her brash, outspoken personality may prove trying for human co-workers. Recommend assigning her a small contingent of core bites and increasing ownership of salvage yard operations as appropriate. Dr. Julius rolled in. Due to variable shift schedules and his own heavy work as project leader, Dr. Roldan may not be able to respond in a timely fashion to inquiries from Far Eden personnel. He encourages you to directly to direct any mission critical concerns to your shift supervisor and reminds you that together humans and core bots can overcome any challenge. Yeah, bullshit. That's why we're getting shot at. Alright. That's going to do it for this episode. Like I said, nothing really important. I need to get ready for school tomorrow and stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, be down in the description below. As always, guys, this has been Crazy HD, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. See ya.